Last time on Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. You could just table flip. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, she's going to throw the table. It unleashes a strike on... You would think the small one that tried to set it on fire, or maybe the one who just tried to throw a table at it. (laughs) Kobolds, having been provoked, move out from their hiding spot, look at you, and begin rushing at you. And they screech, We are dragons and we need your meats! (laughs) (laughs) Oh no, kobolds are adorable. Welcome back to Dice Fall and Everyone Dies. GM Chris here, and let's talk about the relationship of levels and NPC characters in Galerion. NPC and monster stat blocks underwent a significant design change in the swap from 1st edition to 2nd edition. For some context, the 1st edition Pathfinder was based on a legacy system of Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 edition. One of the special aspects of this edition was how it worked to simulate as many ideas as possible. And while that provided a rule set for most every situation or monster, the more creative ideas or hybridization that happened between established class structures added significant complexity. And so to keep that simulation consistent between players, characters, and monsters, as well as non-player characters, they used similar rules and followed discernible trends when creating stats. And you put in a solid 20-year legacy of dedicated and creative people, the Simulacra style of D&D 3.5 and Pathfinder 1st Edition made a lot of wonderful fans. The significant counterpoint, though, to that complexity of simulation is that such systems are often barriers for new and less experienced players to enjoy a full suite of what the game had to offer. And as inclusivity and shared experience is a real core part of the Paizo game philosophy, their team used the switch to second edition to move away from complex simulation, and they untwined the creation principle shared between players, NPCs, and monsters. Their reasoning for doing so was that the design space got opened up and allowed monsters to become more varied, and also allowed your NPC characters to provide unique challenges for high-level games while not specifically matching player levels. Let me give you an example. Let's take a master baker. This person is the most amazing baker in all of Avistan. They've spent countless hours at their craft. So what level should they be? In first edition, that baker might have needed to be something like level 10. To be so awesome at baking, his combat power had to match that skill level because of the system build. While in 2nd edition, the Master Baker can be much lower level, let's say maybe level 5. But in baking, they can match if not beat level 10 players. Thus, the Baker's potential combat rating is going to be about level 5. Still high enough to thwack the level 1 rogue who keeps trying to steal his pastries, but not a real combat encounter to level 10s. But, since the NPC represents two kinds of challenges, the combat side fairly inexperience giving type of challenge but as a baker a level 10 challenge as you try to combat the flavors and sweetness provided in such a quality baker now why does that matter in one sense it gives gms the freedom to make challenges for their players in areas outside of combat with citizens the players may have overlooked in another light the system also provides a different take on world simulation that is really a bit more true You see, a master baker is unable to survive well in an accomplished fight, but they can make sweets fit for royalty on command. And there are also growing pays with the switch from 1st to 2nd edition in this concept, because players tend to use their power to size up the potential threats that are arrayed against them. Their stats tend to be that first frame of reference when you deal with the world. And so if NPCs and monsters lean too far away from what those perceptions can be, players tend to feel unnecessarily overwhelmed when an encounter could be simple in nature. So this means that GMs have a greater responsibility to telegraph useful information to their players so they can reasonably prepare a response. Challenges should rarely be unfair towards the players. You know, this is a social game after all. 
If you want to be the most social, go ahead and leave us a rating and comment on our podcast on your platform of choice. Doing so really helps the podcast rank in searches, and it opens up the discoverability to more people. It really helps us out a ton. So, when we last left the party in the depths of Citadel Alterain, a groking menace pulled the keystone from the entrance to the basement and collapsed the party's escape route. Now, trapped in the dangerous, dark dungeons of Hell Knight Hill, our party must confront the challenges at hand. <laughs> It's delicious. Welcome back from our delicious break after I have done everything in my power to break the hearts of my players by blocking off their access to an escape route. The hall has collapsed. How's everyone's status so far? Taffy, how many spells you got left? This many. Oh, that's a that's a beautiful middle finger. A <laughs> tweeting bird. I have to remember that one. Um, so you only have one spell left? Yes. Good thing cantrips are awesome, right? No? All cantrips are terrible. You have an attack cantrip? I have a couple of attack cantrips because all of my other ones are, I mean, okay. But... My cantrips are awesome. How's Stana doing? 19 hit points and you tell me. Half HP? That's not too bad. It and must how... be nice to be at half HP. How's, how's Deimos doing? I'm at full HP, but I don't have any spells. How many buttons does Deimos have left? Five. Yes, tell me five. I've only taken three. Did we get along at the beginning of the... Not today. You didn't love her this time. Greedy one. You sick son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the beginning of each session. I know, that's why we took a break. <laughs> oh, the birds sweet so deliciously. Oh, double bird. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> <laughs> How's Damos' spell catalog doing? Zero. We have none. <laughs> Excellent. So we've dramatically limited the healing, also cut off your escape route, and how's Bread looking? Uh, he's actually starting to panic. Oh, my. Oh, no. Yeah, he, uh, it, being in prison for a decade, it, it really fucked with his, with his head. Um, so he's now seeing his himself in more or less a prison, and he's starting to panic. Oh, no. So like visibly, out. yeah, yeah. He uh, he rushed up to the to the rubble, started just pulling all. I mean, all the stones he could. It's not making a difference though, because it's a lot of rubble. No, 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 not again, not fucking again. So Taffy's gonna come up to Bread and be like, Bread, there's other ways out. We're okay. Leave me the fuck alone. Bread. <sighs> the the kobolds come up. Remember, dragons are not afraid. There's always another way out. <sighs> Where? He pauses. You see him look one way, look another. Well, there is part of this place we've never been to. Well, and there's also the entrance that we came in the original time. The shitty to climb way in and out. We're in the basement. We're not in the basement yet. Y'all are in the basement. We're in the basement. No, we were leaving to go. Uh huh. Y'all were in the hallway, a hundred foot long hall, six hall or f three halls on one side, three halls on the other. Y'all were coming up, and about thirty foot away from y'all's exit, where y'all came in, there was the rope, and the rope got pulled. When that happened, it looked like a keystone came out and thus collapsed. A where we were. Because we were on the first floor still. No, no we were in the basement. You're we were in the basement. basement. You are in the basement. When did we enter the basement? Like last session. Yeah. You entered the basement, episode 14, when you leveled. Y'all went with Alec through the secret door. Oh, good point. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't listen to the episodes. Like Episode 14 hasn't come out yet, Chris. Yeah, but you wouldn't know at 13. <laughs> So, the way is blocked. Your kobold friends... Is that Tegan? That mm -hmm. was Tegan. Your kobold friends say that there's a part of this area that they haven't explored yet. These southern tunnels, they are dangerous. Wait, I just realized how shitty the situation was. I was only a little miffed before, now I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get many great villain laughs. 
That was one of them. Mm -hmm. If Taffy dies, it's you. It's your fault. I think he'd take pride in that. So, y'all are in complete dark in a hundred foot long, no, fifteen we're not. foot wide hallway. The light of your fairy fire, the only thing providing any luminescence. There are three halls to the north, three halls to the south, and then the doors that are to the east that y'all have explored. Your kobold friends tell you that the cultists kick them out of the northern halls and that the southern halls, they have not had a chance to explore because they are too dangerous. Zarf, Pib. Yes! We're, we'll explore the southern halls. It is very dangerous. You believe there's an exit? There's a good chance of it. Bread, take a deep breath. We're going to get out of this. He takes a breath, still visibly shaken, clammy. It's going to be hard for him. You have my word. Question. Answer. What's about the cultists? Didn't they collapse that? Oh, wow, there's a door there. It would have been so much easier to know that there was a door there. Huh. But what if, what if they attack from our backside? Then we'll kill them. I like your logic. Mm -hmm. So you have three halls to the south, three to the north. How would you like to proceed? All right, let's go in the center one. Okay, yep. so we're going to the southern center hall. Yes. So this is a five foot wide hallway. Who wants to go first? Uh, Stana will go first. Okay, yep. she does have her new sword drawn. Excellent. So as you proceed down the tunnel, you see that it actually angles out from the hall. So it's not a straight line down. And then you get to it and then it starts banking a little bit southeast to start with. And then it look, feels like it angles out south and it comes to what appears to be and is a closed door. Demos, can you check for, strap, for traps? Certainly. I'm going to go up and that's thievery or survival? Thievery. Perception to check, though. Perception to check is 16. From what you can tell, this door does not appear to be locked. Nor does it appear to be trapped. Looks all good. Okay. Should we be quiet and stealthy about this? Stan is going to try to very quietly open the door. Okay, doke. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. Stano doesn't have that. So go ahead and give me a dexterity check. 13. All right. Claw, claw, claw. So you open the door. Before we do anything else, I'd like to drain my bonded item. Okay. Which is Wimble. Um, I get back one spell. It doesn't kill him or anything. It just makes him tired for the day. Wimble seems to be requesting a swig of the flask. I give him a swig of the flask. He is more pleased now. All right. So you've opened the door, Stana, right? Yes. And is Demos right behind you? Yes. So you open this door, and what you see before you is along a southern wall, there is a large relief carving, carving of a sunburst made of nails. But instead of typical flagstones, the floor is made up of headstones with names and dates. And curiously, you see that six of the headstones seem to have been pried open and reveal empty graves within. So Stagram? The, mm. the room appears to be about 25 foot wide and about 25 foot deep. There is an opening to your right, so slightly to the west. And what appears to be a longer extension heading towards the east. And what appears to be a deeper chamber further south. Yes, my lady. Are you familiar with this area? I believe these are the internment crypts. Mm. Any possibility of undead, do you think? The signifiers can be creative. If there are, there likely would have been volunteers to protect the crypt from unwanted visitors. Mm. Uh, we're going to move forward into the room. Okie doke. Fun stuff here. Alright, so who moves into the room with Stano? Damos. So it's going to be Stano, Damos. Taffy's going to 
followed by Taffy. Uh, is Bread or Alec bringing up the rear? I'll bring up the rear. Okie doke. So you file into the room, and so when you, you enter into the room and you file in, then you hear coming down from the marked gravestones that are towards the east a regimented clang, 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 and then a thump against the stone. Clang, 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 thump against the stone. And you see marching up in formation two lines of three deep what appear to be skeletal footmen being led from the rear by a skeletal hell knight, one in full regalia. And as y'all enter into the room, they present their spears directly pointed towards y'all. I think we should have Alex front. Roll perception for initiative. Awesome. 27. 23. Dice everywhere. All right, so 27 was Brett, correct? 11. And what was Taffy? Nine. Brett, you are the first. What would you like to do? Um, hold my turn. Alrighty. Stano. Um, she is holding her sword out in front of her. She's going to say, stand down. Very affirmatively. Okay, are you going to hold as well? Yes. Alrighty. Er, actually, what she's going to do, she's going to ready an action. If one of them comes at her, she's going to attack it. Alrighty. Because I think the first, her yelling that out counts as an intimidate check? No, not unless you intend to intimidate. Um... Yeah, she's going to try to basically exert authority. All right, go ahead and give me your intimidate check. 21. When you say stand down, each of the skeletal guards kind of rattle a little bit, and then they look back to the one in the Hell Knight armor behind, and he, uh, the Hell Knight armor tamps down his halberd twice but they don't appear to uh, break rank on there but they are still being aggressive on your successful intimidate what is the condition effect applied oh um i have no idea oh uh frightened one i have to double check to see whether or not skeleton cards get frightened (laughs) i was expecting you to go north (laughs) (laughs) i know so the skeleton guards look behind but they do not appear to be affected by fear okay so next up is the skeletal hell knight directing with his hand holding his halberd he points and says in a raspy almost chattering voice the intruders You, take this side. You, over here. Any who do not honor the ways and do not show respect will fall to the blade. And so it looks like he is intending to direct some to the side of Taffy and Damos. And then it looks like he is going to move up to 10 feet within range of Stano, Mm -hmm. and he's going to attack with his halberd. Okay. What is Stano's AC? 20. So it looks like he hits with a 23. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But she ready to move that if he went to attack her that she was going to hit him. Correct. He is hitting you at range with the halberd. Okay. As the halberd hits, he deals to you 10 points of damage. Jesus! And as you're getting hit with a strike, you feel stabbing pain across your skin as though nails are being driven in. I need you to give me a will save. 11. You feel the pain in your hands, your arms, shoulders, legs, back, thighs, nails being hammered in and you are stunned for the round it's as though it's almost as though you're being crucified while standing Jesus bread 
Do you want to take your action yet? Um, who's next after? You believe Alec will be the one acting uh, next. I'll, hold, I'll stay holding. Okay, do it. Alec moves up to the line of skeletal soldiers. Actually, no, he's going to move up to engage the skeletal hell knight who had to move up at this point. And he can't get into a flanking position yet, but he is going to attempt to strike at the one who is... Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and say it. He is going to strike at the one who is struck at one of great import and come to her defense. Aww. He almost crit. He didn't quite crit. But he moves up and he's doing his own power attack. Dealing a solid 16 points of damage. Denting in a good chunk of the Hell Knight's armor itself. Brad, do you want to act? Yeah. Uh, where am I as far as how close am I to the to the guy that Alec just hit? You'll need to at least take a action to move up to him. Okay. I will take an action to move up. Uh, twin strike him. Okay, dip. Um, first. Uh, uh, last hero point to you. <gasps> yes! How many do you have left, Brad? Zero. Oh, dangerous time for you, yes. Okay, let's try this one more time. Uh, 22. Hits. Uh, 8. 8 damage? Mm -hmm. Still up? Okay. And you hit with your axe, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, that was the axe. Okay. And then, um... It's minus 4 on ag an agile weapon, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, 4. <laughs> 4 on that one. I rolled a two. So four to hit? Yeah. Misses. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my quick draw, draw my bow. Okay. And attack with the bow. So you just moved, right? Mm -hmm. And then you did two strikes. So that's your three actions. No, the the, the twin strike is one action. Oh, you're right. Sorry. Um, and that was a really bad roll. So you just quick drew your bow? Yeah. And you attacked with your ranged weapon? Yeah. That triggers the Skeletal Hell Knight's attack of opportunity, which he will now take on you mm. for using a ranged weapon within his area of effect because of his halberd. Mm. What is your AC? 20. No, I'm sorry, 19. He just barely gets you, and he's going to hit you for... It's a D10. For 11 points of damage. Mm. You feel as though you're being pierced by nails all over your skin as well. Roll a will save. 17. You're able to withstand the pain as though the nails are pressing in on you from both sides of your flank, on your chest as well as your back and arms, but you grit your teeth and bear through it. Make your attack. Oh, I, I didn't. You missed? Yeah. Okay. And now, the other skeletons follow the direction. Two move in to begin flanking with their own weapons against Taffy. Another, another one moves to flank. Two move over to flank Demos. And then one moves over to flank Bread with the skeletal Hell Knight. So the first two attacking Taffy. What is Taffy's AC? Oh, my AC is 14. So 14 AC? It critically hits you with it. Jesus. And deals 11 points of damage. Is, Ta is Taffy still conscious? No. All of y'all's lights just went out. The one that was moving to flank on Taffy then turns her attention towards Stano, but is not flanking. It misses because oh. I'm pretty sure a 14 does not hit you when I roll a four. No. The first one who's attacking Damos misses. The second one attacking Damos misses. I just rolled a two and a three <laughs> from Fresh Monsters. <sighs> And then one on the other side of bread. What's bread's AC? 19. Because it's flanking, it also hits you. Dealing to you 
seven points of damage. Are you still awake? Oh, yeah. Damos, you find two skeletal soldiers on either side of you. They just walked up and slashed across your wizard. You are in the dark. What do you do? First, I'm going to cast light. Put that on my, I don't know, my little instrument. Your, uh, my flute. Do I have a lute? Liar. liar? Your liar. Yeah, my liar. And um, first thing, I need to use battle medic on. As you cast light. Now! Get him! The skeletal soldiers, because of the direction of the Hell Knight, gain the attack of opportunity action. And since they're on either side of you, Deimos, and you've just casted a spell, they're each getting a strike. What is your AC? Uh, 17. The first one hits for three points of damage. The second one does not critical and hits you for eight points of damage. Are you still conscious? Oh, yeah, I'm perfectly conscious. Your light is up. So now, because you've been struck while attempting to cast the spell, I need you to go ahead and give me either a perform check or an occultism check to keep your spell. Uh, I have performance. And I recommend taking whichever one is highest. I don't think I have performance. Uh, well, I do, but performance is better. I'll just take that one. You! Welcome back, my pretty and precious. It only took a highly organized undead death squad to start getting him back. 19. 19 keeps it. Okay. Do I have any action left after all that nonsense? So light only costs you one action. Okay. You still have two. Okay. Battle medic on, can I reach Taffy? I'll say yes. Um, but if Deimos moves, it's going to yep. trigger another attack of opportunity. You only get one reaction in a round. Oh, thank God. Okay, so and my question was, can I reach Taffy without moving? I'll allow it. Okay. Let's do battle medic. Even more. Just takes death-defying situations. Okay. Work. How's your luck holding out, Demos? That was worse. Nine. Nine is not a critical failure. But it does mean that Taffy does not gain any hit points from it. Is she stabilized? Well, were you, were you battle medic? Are you trying to treat wounds to stabilize, or are you trying to battle medic to heal? Well, I need to stabilize her first. Okay, so then that means Taffy. If you go with stabilize, it still takes the same number of actions, but is not. Be, it, there's a difference between treating wounds in a death defying situation and battle medic. I had to read up on this. Okay. So you can try to stabilize her. And that's not going to count against your battle medic okay, once per day. Let's stabilize her. So, with the nine on the stabilize, is still a fail, okay. but it doesn't waste your battle medic, and that's okay. important. Okay. So now Taffy, so you need to beat a natural eleven to stabilize. All right. So you are now at the dying two condition. Oh great. Okay, so okay I'm rolling a clear right. You're not dead yet. You still have one button, right? No. Oh. Oh. Again, you're not dead yet. You're you're only at dying two. Stano, it's your turn. Believe in the heart of your party. Heart of the cards. Who's the heart of the party? It, uh. It's Taffy. Oh my. <laughs> Keep beating Taffy. Keep beating Stano. Actually, I'm not okay. Okay, you said I was stunned. Am I? What stunned am I? Stunned You're only one. Stunned one. Okay, so I only lose one action. Yep. Okay. Is she in hitting distance of the Hell Knight in front of her? You have to move up to hit the Hell Knight in front of you because he hits you at range. Damn it. Which is going to trigger his attack of opportunity. Only if you move through, not if you move up to. So you can take a five foot move as one action, and not provoke. So you can fight through the stun, and you can swing. Sorry, I'm double-checking something. Okay. That's what she's going to do. She's going to move up to him, and she's going to hit. She's going to brutish shove. All right. Roll. Hang on. I'm doing math. 
29. Hits. Does not crit. Oh. God damn it. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Let me do this. Let me read this. And this is just medium size, right? Correct. First off, real quick. She does five damage to him. Okay. And he's flat-footed until the end of his next turn. And she shoves him all the way back. How far? In... It doesn't say... I think. Oh, it's five feet. Shoves him five feet back. And she's going to follow him. Because she can do that without using a move action. Okay. No. So you shove him back. You can. You notice that you sent him reeling a bit. And you can tell that there's... He's rattling around in the armor. You say that we give no respect, but you haven't even asked yet. You're here defiling just like that other one. Have we not collected all the livery from the upstairs to get it corrected? Show your livery then. She's going to remove... In- she's going to show it. She's going to pull out the symbol for the Order of the Nail. You're out of actions. That's an action to reach into her bag? It's one action. Oh. Who's, whose turn is it next? It's his. Ah. Eh. He's still flat-footed. Correct. He's still flat-footed. He does not critically hit you. Well, if he hits me at all, this is going to be bad. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Ah. This is really bad for everybody. Six points of damage. I'm not unconscious yet. <laughs> Great. That for the first attack. And then he is going to claw at you. With his hand, since you were right up in full melee with him. What's your AC? 20. He hits with his claw attack. For five points of damage. Stano's unconscious. Yeah. Stano is in dying condition. Oh my god. So with the first strike, trying to knock away the great sword with his halberd, he then takes his other claw and slashes it across your chest felling you. So, Stano is now in Dying 1. Taffy is at Dying 2. Alec moves up and brings his greatsword down upon his enemy. Not critically hitting. Isn't he in full regalia? Right. They have made no moves to attack Alec whatsoever. But he moves up and with 16 points of damage, slams the head of the skeletal hell knight out against the wall and the armor falls back. God. Then with his remaining move, he moves to stand over Taffy's unconscious body. He protect. (laughs) He attack. He protect. (laughs) Should have listened to the lady. Now you're all going to get buried twice. (laughs) <laughs> Fred, it's your turn. Oh. Um. You want to? I'm gonna. I'm gonna rush up to, uh, Stano's body. Um, reach into the pack and pull out. I don't know. He doesn't really know what's going on, really, to be honest. But he's gonna reach in for whatever looks like a hell knight, hell knight thing and pull it out. So, you reach in for the insignia. You notice that now, as you were hastily moving, that none of the skeletons took any attacks when they could have on you Mm -hmm. as you reach and pull it out. But you also notice that they have begun acting differently. Their attacks or their movements are no longer regimented. It seems as though they are much more akin to the skeletons you fought above now, as though they have lost the guidance that they had once had. Oh, Well, that's kind yeah, of Skeletons one more above. Yeah, Skeletons so. Guys, we have silvered weapons. The silver doesn't work against undead. Only lycanthropes and devils, I think. It does. It's extra effective against devils. Bludgeoning weapons are very good against skeletons. I have it. Well, I guess she's not stunned anymore now that she's dead. How extra effective are they? Because I have a mace. <laughs> they don't have resistances oh, okay. to it. Red, you still have one additional action. Um, is there any right next to me? Or within within melee range? Because of her brutish shove? Mm-hmm. No. So y'all are further away. The skeletons have moved around two to flank Deimos. Two are now effectively flanking 
uh, Alec, and there is one more that is now 10 foot away from you. So you had to rush by essentially through the uh, attack of opportunity range of like three of them okay. to get to Stano where you were. Okay. Um, I'm going to move behind one of the skeletons that are flanking Alec. Okay. If I can. If there's room. You can. And now the skeletons attack! One of them is now flat footed. Yes. But so is Alec. Starting with Deimos, <laughs> both of the skeletons' scimitars, now being much less coordinated, are being batted away with your rapier as you're trying to defend yourself from their advances. So neither of them hit. Correct. Awesome. One of them is able to get two of them are able to roll really good against Alec. And in comes some damage directly to Alec as two scimitars, one into his leg and one into his side, dealing to him a combined total of appears to be 12 damage. And then the third one is going to go ahead and go after Demos as well. Ugh. Rolling three. And missing. <laughs> just, just missing. It's fine. It's all fine. I'm I'm hurting everyone but the one Medvik actually wanted to hurt, and he's going to hurt my family if I don't get more buttons away from Demos. I only have three. Demos. <laughs> he said he wanted all of them. Demos, it's your turn. Okay. Can I get to either... Can I reach either Taffy or Stano within one move? Well, you are right there by Taffy. So okay, Alec is standing over Taffy's body. You're right there. Alec is trying to defend you at this point. You have four skeletons, two primarily on Alec, two are attacking on you. Okay, let's try to stabilize her again. All right, give me a medicine check. Uh, 14. 14 is not a success. You need to hit a 15. But So this is the battle. This is stabilized, though, right? Yes, this is stabilized. Okay. So I believe that takes two actions. You have one action left. Uh, well, I have my I have a weapon on me, so let's try my rapier against him just for the sake of doing something. Okay. Uh, oh, well, 21. 21 hits. <laughs> Five. You hit through, but again, you're trying to pierce through bones with it, and it is not able to pull enough effective damage. Stano, you have the dying one condition. I do. It is your turn. This is so stressful. You need to roll a flat 11 or better. Or you I've never will... died before. Need to hoard that. I rolled a three. <laughs> You now have the dying two condition. Okay. The skeletal hell knight is I'll done. Die in 12. So it is now Alec's turn. Alec with his great sword will strike at the first one, slamming against it, killing it instantly. Let's see how much damage he actually did. He did enough to kill it. That's the important part. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll make his second strike against the other one. Never mind, that was enough to hit. Brilliant! <laughs> and the two that were flanking him, he's able to take and slash through one, wheel around, and then slash through the other. And he'll use his final action to step up and tr to stand next to Damos to try to help break the flank that's covering Damos. Awesome. Fred, it is now your turn. Okay. I had a question about bludgeoning. How does that actually... Does it, does it like, double damage, or...? It is... Uh, it is not resisted, okay. so all it's straight damage through. Okay, a bit like slashing is resist resisted. Yes. Okay. Would um, a non-lethal hit on from a from like a sword would that be considered bludgeoning? No, it's no. still technically slashing. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I'm just gonna go slash instead. That's fine. Um, okay, I'm gonna twin strike or er, move into flanking on if okay. there if there is available. <laughs> Between Demos and Alec, there's at least one you can move into. Okay. Does a 15 hit? Does a 15 hit? A 15 misses. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Why am I rolling so low? That that misses too. <laughs> okay. Um. So that was the move and your twin strike. So you have one action left, right? Yeah. Um. How many actions is it to grapple? Is it just one? Yes, it'd be one action, and it'd be an athletics check. Okay. I'm gonna aggra- attempt to grapple the one that I'm flanking. Okay. So you have to drop your weapons and then try to bear hug them. Uh, thirteen. A thirteen is not enough to. Thirteen isn't enough, right? A thirteen is not enough to grapple them. Okay. All right. It is now their turn. How many are left? There are three skeletal guards Jesus left. Jesus Christ. And the first one strikes at Alec, and hits him critically for. 11 points of damage? He's still up. Uh, let's double check that. He was when I last looked. He's I'm still up. He's okay. not happy, but he's still up. Thank God. The other one strikes with its scimitar against him and is able to hit him as well. And he's not looking great, but he is still up. Oh, good. He's got three hit points left. <laughs> And then the other one will attack Demos. Demos, what is your AC? 17. He is able to hit but not crit you for four points of damage. Okay. Wow, the monsters had a really good round. Mm -hmm. Demos. Yes. It is now your turn. Okay, we're trying to battle medic. (laughs) Demos, use those hands. Heal them. Let's try to... Well, I'm not using Battle Medic. I'm trying to stabilize Taffy again. I'm going to do this. Okay. uh, That was a total of 20. 20. To stabilize. Taffy, you are now stable and wounded one. I will... not conscious. Correct. I will... uh, You have one action left. Battle Medic is only one. Okay, so I'm going to use Battle Medic on her now. Okie doke. Give me another medicine. 15. 15, heal 2d8. 2d8. Oh, back from the dead. 11. So, Taffy, you see as your eyes open, dim light from Damos with Alec standing above you, wielding his greatsword in both hands, and Damos wrapping your wounds with his gentle but firm hands. (laughs) (laughs) Damos is now now McDreamy. Get to stay no in a moment. And it's now your turn. You see that there are three skeletons still being in battle. Did Taffy see her grandpappy again? <laughs> Taffy's grumpy. Taffy is very grumpy. <laughs> you can do it, Taffy. Hey, does Taffy see that Stano's dead? Not yet. Oh boy. As soon as Taffy stands, they'll be able to notice that Damos is. Well, Stano's on the opposite side on the ground. Stano's not dead yet. I have to... Right? She's dying. Well, dying dying is not dead. But I made her save her last button so she doesn't, like, (laughs) die, die. (laughs) Better to maintain that one. That'd be an interesting letter home. Sorry, your daughter died. Are the skeletons all kind of close together? One or two of them on either side of Alec and are standing uh, basically not quite flanking to you now. They're more flanking Alec than they are you. So the two of them are in melee of you. And then one is about five foot away from you. And that's the one he's going to be engaged with bread here in a few moments. So while Taffy's looking up her spell, <laughs> are, have we decided? Yeah. What we got? Taffy's going to stand. Okay. Because she has to. You see that... Stano is fallen and is bleeding. Well, you see the flickers of flames start on her fingers, and then she shakes it off and goes over to Stano, touches her, and casts Stabilize. Fey Heritage! Ho oh, ho! Stano's not dying no more! Actually, it's just, it's not even a roll. Yeah, I think it's an auto-stable. Yeah, you're automatically stabilized. Do I get, like, one hit point, or... Nope, you're at zero and unconscious. Cool. It's okay, I can deal with that in a second. I think that took all... Yeah, that's all my... Stano, breathe. (laughs) Alec! (laughs) Alec is going to move over with his three whole hit points 
and he is going to crash through one of the skeletons with 12 damage, whopping through one. There are now two standing. And then, so he had to take care of one of the ones that was on him. And then he'll take care of one of the other ones with a nice second strike. So we'll see what the damage is on that. Well, at least I'm rolling good for someone who's not killing you. Um, dealing another nine points of damage after the resistance, leaving one skeleton standing. And it's the one that is in front of Bread, whose turn it is now. Hmm. Bread, there's one more monstrous skeleton in front of you. Um, I'm going to quick draw my second hatchet. And just go to town on this guy if I can. All right. Hopefully. You can do it. Ooh. 25. Hits. And Kill it. You are one point away from a crit. Uh, three. Slashing? Yeah. It seems that you hit into the bones and then it bounces off the bones that's there. Um, I'm going to punch it. All right, punch it. I don't know how to. I don't know what uh, kind of bonus I get for punching. Punch is bludgeoning. So you're trained in unarmed strike. Okay. That's strength, right? Yep. So. Huh. Um. Let's see. Twenty-four. Twenty-four hits. And what do I roll for that? So for a medium-sized humanoid, it should be one d four plus your strength. Oh, that is one d four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, six. So. Seeing that your axe head wasn't doing the damage, that it was just not getting through the bone, you then decide to hit it with a left cross. You spin its head around <laughs> and around, and then you ended up hitting it so hard in the process, it just spins right off, chattering <laughs> off to the side. Like a cartoon? Oh, yes. Christ. Okay, so we're out of uh, you are, combat. You're presently out of combat. Everyone is stable. Both Taffy and uh, Stano have the wounded one condition presently. Um, they must going to be a dork and scooch over really fast to Stano, yank her head into his lap, and do medicine to heal. Okay. Uh, 17. 17 so. will grant... A wonderful 2d8. Six. Can we, like, really dramatic about this for a moment? Yeah. She's going to take a really big, deep gas. <gasps> Corvius! <laughs> no, the Stamos. Oh. Oh. Hi. Glad to see you awake. Just petting her head. <laughs> he really does have gentle hands, my lady. She looks slightly embarrassed and just kind of starts getting her stuff together. Kazalyn is going to sit down on the ground very quickly and then just lay down and stare up at the ceiling. Okay. Now that she's escaped his grasp, he's going to go do medicine for everybody else. Okay. For bread. Kazalyn. Kazalyn. Bread. Ooh. Nat 20. So 25. So on a critical success, that is 4d8. I need another d8. I don't remember what a D8 looks like. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's the diamond, then. Oh, yeah. 23. Ooh. Damn. I think I'm healed all the way. <laughs> Good. Yep. Um, obviously, Taffy needs some. And I can do this for everybody every, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> uh, it takes it, 10 minutes it to takes, perform it. And, and then I can only do it It takes an every... hour before... Uh, folks can need it again. Okay, right. Um, so who, for who are we doing now? Taffy, 17. So 17 is your heal check? Yes. So that's 2d8? Uh, 7. So Taffy is up by 7. Who do you want to do next? Alec. Thank you, Sir Demos. Want, want, 10. 10? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so you much. have to wait an hour. <laughs> I think um, you might need a little more medicine yeah. on that one. Accidentally pinched him a couple of times. Ah. <laughs> okay. And I can do this check on myself, right? Yes. Okay. I need to do that. 
Oh, I made it worse. <laughs> no, I got a nine on myself. <laughs> Not a critical fail. <laughs> um, should we just sit and rest in this room for a little bit? <laughs> it, so hitting, healing everyone is about an hour. Yeah. So you're bring everyone in there. The your two kobold friends kind of stick their heads in uh, about halfway through the process. That's a lot of bones. Oh wait, so Deimos just gave us hit points with the treat wounds. Yes. Ability, right? So Taffy and Steno are no longer at wounded one. Excellent. They just lost that. Sorry. Good. Good. So it took me about an hour to get through everybody, is what you're saying? Yes, it takes 10 minutes to do the Treat Wounds ability, and everyone can be affected by it, or it can't be affected more than once every hour. Okay, so that means I can just try everybody all over again. <laughs> well, that's if you want to, do y'all want to take a long rest in this area here? Yes. In this With, area? What does a long back. rest count as? So that would be bedding down and trying to rest for an hour. So you'll have the 25 foot by 25 foot area that you're at. Plus the twenty foot uh, burial hallway that extends to the east. There's a lot of open space that y'all have not explored here yet. Plus, y'all have not yet uh, taken a look at the stuff on the bodies. Uh, Stato's gonna start kind of poking through them. She's still really not talking to anybody yet. She's she's pretty embarrassed. <laughs> so you realize that the halberd also has a rune on it. And the skeletal hell knight is wearing fully functioning half plate. Mm. Sano's already in half plate. And the guards have functional scimitars as well. But can we put all this stuff in kind of the pack to sell type thing? Do you want to? Yeah. So you can gather it all up, yes. Let's see all the fun stuff you've got on your skeletal gods. Any potions of cure wounds? I do not believe you have any potion-y bits in there. Does anybody have those left? <laughs> no, you do not have any po You did not find any potions there. Damn it. But on each of the skeletons, you're able to find 20 arrows. So that's 100 arrows between each of them. As well as 5 scimitars. And 5 short bows. So are y'all wanting to try to do a long rest right in this section here? Does anybody want the halberd? No. Do you want? I do. Okay. Okay. So as Taffy's getting checked out, she can tell you that that is a plus one halberd. Plus one to hit? Mm-hmm. Nice. So much like the plus one greatsword, this one is a halberd. All right. Well, I dropped my second hatchet. Kerchunk. Um, Stano's going to go up to the kobolds and be like, is there... This may take longer than we thought. Is there somewhere we could sit that is relatively safe, do you believe? Well, the, the best place is probably where we were making our temporary home, but now that you've killed the cube and killed the killed the doll, we can probably hole up in there pretty well. Sounds good. We need to lay down for a little bit. All right. We, we've been watching the hall to make sure no one did sneaky sneaky while y'all were doing all of the, the battling the deadly stuff. Sneaky sneaky. <laughs> But there's no one in there now. We're sneaky, sneaky again. We should be fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wonderful. Let's let's. I don't know why that sneaky, wrecks me. Sneaky, <laughs> sneaky. <laughs> so they move forward, and they get very low to the ground, and it's almost kind of like a little. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Are they saying this? <laughs> and everybody's following behind. Chonk, 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 chonk. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> hear over the sound of your half plate boots, but yeah. But so y'all can y'all can make it over. Um, and between the detritus in the area, you're able to probably get enough to do a, a makeshift barricade. Does anyone have crafting skill? Yes. So, Stano, you can probably pull together the detritus to figure out it probably enough for some barricades. Give me a craft check. Nat 20. 25. So, you think you can probably get all three of those main doors barricaded with the detritus that's there. She's just going to start doing it. She's not really talking to anybody still. All right, Aww. and so with those blocked off, you believe that you can probably hole up to rest fully. So you'll need you'll want to take a full eight hours, and you can use your medicine skill every essentially every hour. Demos just going by, nursing all the wounds, trying to bind everyone. Okay, sounds good. And so that'll probably take about half a day. 
Question is, who has rations? Santa has ah, rations. I believe I do. So Yes, I do. This area is not well suited to fire because you don't have a great deal of ventilation set up here in the basement. But if you have dry rations, then go ahead and expend those, and you'll be able to make sure that you are nice and settled. Uh, Stano actually has 10 days worth of rations if anybody doesn't have them. I have 14. <laughs> so I'm going to expend mine. She's going to give some to the kobolds, too. Excellent. So between both of them, they'll probably expend one additional ration. That's fine. Okay, so... How are we doing this? It, because we're sleeping for eight hours, right? Or... Correct. So you're going to heal up as much as you can through medicine. So okay. till everyone's done. So it'll take about half a day to get everyone healed and rested. And so that's going to put everyone back at their full hit points. And okay. who, who wants to do the watch? So we're just not going to roll this. Just uh, Stana will. Good. Stana will go ahead and do the watch. Um, who wants to go ahead and take the second watch? It's going to have to be one of you guys. I'm doing medicine. Uh, Taffy will watch. Okay. So when uh, Demos is, you know, gets done healing, making sure to take care of Taffy first and Stano. Stano's for the first <laughs> four hours of the watch after everyone got the majority of their hit points back. I'm uh, assuming I, this works on me as well. Yes. So everyone, you know, even Alec can be up at full hit points after about 12 hours of uh, concerted work. So how many hit points is Stano technically up at when she starts her watch? Uh, everyone should be full about that time. Okay. And so you you hear throughout your watch, it seems like someone initially came and started trying the door and you hear the the jangling and the kind of like some initial banging against the door but it's a little bit half-hearted at this point kind of like checking to see if stuff's still there because they knew that you know y'all had gone in there at some point and they did try forcing themselves in but now they're just at you know after maybe about 20 30 minutes they you seem they kind of gave up for a bit and then went back to their area question yes after all of this do we get our spells back so that's the only thing that happens of note through your rest. So everyone's spell slots are returned after they finish their morning preparations. God. That means you too, Taffy. I know. This was the safest night's sleep we've ever had. It's great to have such powerful honorary dragons. There's only two honorary dragons here. But that makes a party of four honorary dragons and their knight and healer. Well... Bard, right? Bard. Bard. I have slowly become a healer. It's so great. What? We're really, really proud. Thank you. you Sorry we couldn't stop them from collapsing the passage we didn't know about, though. If we had known, we would have watched for it. She's going to give one of them a pat on the head. Red one or green one? Red one. Kind of pat on his head as a little bit, and he kind of nuzzles the side of his horn up to your hand. Oh. Is this what they call a head pat? Yes. They're so awesome. They are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So y'all have your spells back, your hit points are up, and you have a makeshift camp in the war room. It did take a little bit of time. Luckily, your uh, your kobold friend, uh, Pib, was able to get most of the gelatinous crap out of the way. Thank you, Pib. <laughs> It's kind of like mud, but squidgy. Ugh. I think it eventually dissolves after a while. And he sees that there's like this little bowl he got of it, and it's just like, I might be able to use it for spell components. <laughs> Have fun. All right. So, y'all are rested. You have your spells back. What direction would y'all like to go? Continue exploring south or north? And how are you holding up after such a hard fought battle? Is Bread feeling better after having rested? Yeah, he is. And how's Taffy feeling with her near-death experience? <laughs> Taffy's not sure if adventuring is for her. Oh my. Demos came in pretty clutch with their heels. How's Demos feeling? A little emotionally exhausted at this point. 
And how about Stano? She is probably noticeably quieter than she usually is right now. She is still she she still looks very embarrassed. Alec, How's Alec? Alec is doing his kind of his stoic look during the uh it was kind of a still a leap of faith to to be able to rest in bed down with pretty much complete strangers, but considering everything he feels he feels he feels a bit close to y'all now, though he he's still not quite sure if the two kobolds are near as adorable as y'all say they are, north or south. Oh, I'd also like to make sure the attack uh, regenerate the extra spell slot. Cool. Yep, that's part of your morning preparations. Go back and explore the crypts. Might as well. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So you head back into the crypts after undoing your barricade, moving back towards the center hall with your fairy lights illuminating as torches, right? Uh, yes. And as you move in, back into the room, you see that nothing else seems to have disturbed this area. You have a ten-foot-wide opening from the battle scene to the west. The 20-foot-wide corridor heading down east into the darkness, as well as a 5-foot corridor heading south. Where would y'all like to explore first? Let's go south. Let's go south. Kobold said it was south. We move south. So you begin, who's going to head first? There's not a door here, so... Are we going to have Stano lead again? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, Stano will lead. <laughs> All right. So Stano begins stepping forward. Carefully. Right Carefully. Stano. As you enter in, you find what appear to be narrow stone walls filled with coffin-sized compartments that stretch from the floor to the ceiling in a dark, claustrophobic chamber. Most of the compartments are occupied with shroud-covered bodies, though some of them are conspicuously empty. Give me a perception check. 20. 19. 13. 23. The spots that seem conspicuously emptied look as though someone has relatively recently been moving around changing the direction and space of objects in this area. And what was Taffy's? Uh, 19. And as you're moving into and checking out the corridors of this obvious Hell Knights of the Nail ossuary, you can see that it looks like the movements were relatively recent. Mm. Like, someone could have been here within maybe the last few days or weeks at this point. Someone was clearly looking for something. And then, as you begin moving around, Taffy, you come across something that you did not expect to see. What you see is that there is a rune that has been triggered. It seems as though someone has unleashed a ward. Yes, a ward. Oh. Not a ward. Like Dick Grayson? Yes. Sort of. Uh, do I need to roll another? Give me an yeah. arcana check. Nine. You're not entirely sure what kind of ward it is, but it looks like it was something that was highly sophisticated at the time. Can I take a little bit of the time to study it and try rolling it again? As you begin to get a closer look at it and you're going to try to give some deeper study to it you oh. see what i rolled but i could have used assurance which would have got me right uh assurance would work in this case okay well then so that tells you that it was a necromantic ward cool. that likely whatever had disturbed this ossuary had triggered the ward which would have allowed for necromantic magic and that's when you see three helms eyes begin glowing <sighs> As they step forward into the crowded, claustrophobic ossuary, and you see 
these glowing Hell Knight of the Nail helmets. Smoky incorporeal bodies lit up with ghastly red rage. That we'll fight next time. Oh, Christ. <laughs> They're called Hell Crowns. Thanks. Good to know. Hey, you have mad. You have magic weapons now. They don't have ghost touch, Chris. Still magic. Mm. It's just silver, right? The log of Lichter Severus de Viri of the Order of the Nail. While within my permission to grant leave, only Stogrum's plea to retrieve the treasured memento of his now late father swayed my decision. An officer of his caliber should have enough rope to hang himself. If not prove, he should choose not to. And if the merits of adherence to his familial duty were not enough, once Stagram retrieves that ancestral relic, his wealth will be opened up to the Order's coffers. And if he fails in his holiday escapade, he will be shunted from the Order, and the accumulated works of that storied lineage will become forfeit as well. We likely should have informed him of the volunteers that are guarding the deep vaults of that citadel, and even if we cannot man the defense of the mysterious artifacts in the lowest depths, our signifiers have used powerful magics to keep the wilderness rabble away from anything of import. This world is still awash in savagery, and the guiding hand of the nail shall take back the wilderness from that roaming filth and mental denigration. We shall instill civilization upon these lands even if we must nail it into each and every monstrous hide. <laughs>